praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so um we are finishing look uh this last uh, few verses of the book of um third john remember third john has got only one chapter we have looked at uh uh, the character of uh, this guy called Diotrephes. So once again, let's uh, just read Third uh, John. So let's let's look at uh, verse nine. Remember, this book has got only one chapter. The scripture says, "I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who love to have preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does." Prating against us with malicious words, and not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren, and forbids those who wish to put uh, who, those who wish to, putting them out of the church. So we see um, this guy what he used to do. Number one, Diotrephes was a malicious gossiper. He was a gossiper, prating against the apostles all the time. So he hated the apostles. Remember when, when you go to the previous audios, uh, the previous series, we say that this actually is a picture of Satan himself. And unfortunately, we have a lot of brethren in the church today who have the spirit of Diotrephes. These people, they are not going to heaven. Actually, they are, they are on their way to hell because they are not even born again. Because what we see from Diotrephes, he wasn't born again. Eh? He was praying against the apostles. These are the apostles who spent three and a half years with Jesus. They are with Jesus. They beheld him. They saw him dying. They saw him resurrecting and he was with them. Then this guy doesn't believe them. He, he, he gossip. He is like, actually, Diotrephes is a picture of Judas. Okay? So he was praying against uh, John with malicious words and and not content with that he 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 was a person who was very stingy very stingy he he never wanted to give and those who were givers the scripture says diotrephes forbid them from giving and anybody who gave in his uh who gave and uh, uh diotrephes came to know later on that that person had given then diotrephes used to excommunicate them from the church and, and John says, when I come to visit this church, the first thing that I will do, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does. This is how you deal with the spirit of Diotrephes. Number one, you face it head on. Don't fear. If, if, if you have an elder or if you have leaders who have the spirit of Diotrephes operating in them. And you know, this is a, a rebellious spirit. This is a complaining spirit. This is a, an, a, 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 an antichrist kind of a spirit. You face it head on. Face them head on and tell them, hey, this is what is eating you. This is what you have. That's what John, John, John said. He said, I will call to mind his deeds which he does. I will bring them openly into the table. And, and the best way of rebuking sin, persistent sin that has gone public, is to deal with it publicly. Sin that has gone public, you deal with it publicly. Sin which has not gone public and people don't know, then there is a hope that you may restore the brother even privately. But any sin that has gone public, you have no option as a pastor, as a leader, but you have to correct it publicly. Okay? So, so John says, when I come to the church, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the church and I'm going to explain to the church that what this man was doing is wrong. And that's how we approach even false doctrine. When, when we are correcting false doctrine, anything that has been taught publicly, an error that has been taught publicly, you have a responsibility as a man of God, you have a responsibility as a pastor to correct it publicly.
And then verse 11, John says, the scripture says, Be beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. So we are being encouraged here not to follow the example of Diotrephes. These are people who divide churches. These are people who split churches. These are people who allow the spirit of gossip to operate in the church. Then the, but the Bible encourages us, the Holy Spirit encourages us not to follow their example. There might be people that you know in the church who have a habit of gossip. Yeah? The, the scripture encourages you to cut them off. Why? Because by cutting them off, you are saving the other people, you are saving the other believers. It's better you put out this one man who has got this spirit to save hundred, to save two, to save five, to save ten people, to save a hundred, a thousand, ten thousand people who would have actually been, uh, uh, been led astray by the doctrine of this man. Okay, then, then we are also encouraged. You see, uh, uh, he who does good is of God, but he who does evil is not, has not seen God. This is a proof that Diotrephes has never, had never seen God. He was in the church, but he, has ne he had never seen God. And, and there are so many people that are, are in the church, but they are not born again. So many people that are in the church, in the fellowship, even in Bible schools. I know people that came to my Bible school and, and I thought they were born again. They even they wrote, even in the admission form, they wrote that they were born again only to find out later they were not born again. How do you know people are not born again? Because they don't love other people. This is how we know people of light and people of darkness. People who are of darkness, they have no love in them. They don't love the brethren. So what do they do? They, they destroy the brethren. They character assassinate them. They finish them. Hmm? But verse 12, it says, Demetrius has a good testimony. Now, these are contrasts between Demetrius and Diotrephes. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. Why? Because Demetrius was living according to the Bible. So when you compare the life of Diotrephes and the life of Demetrius, you see that Dem Demetrius was living according to the Bible. And this, that's a good name can give if, if, you're, if, if, you're, if, you are, if you are pregnant and you, you, don't, you still don't have a name. Look at that name Demetrius, such a beautiful name. Glory to God. So he has a good testimony. That good testimony from the brethren, ladies and gentlemen, it's important. Okay from all and from the truth itself and we also bear witness and you know that our testimony is true so demetrius had a good testimony from the local church he had a good testimony from the scripture itself why because he was living according to the word he was living according to the teachings of jesus he was living according to the teachings of the apostles. So he, he had a good testimony from the truth itself. And we also bear witness. That, that, that means even the people that were with Apostle John, even the people that were with the apostle, they bared witness that Demetrius was, had a good testimony. And you know our testimony is true. What does that mean? Demetrius, he was not living in heresy. He was living as per the word that had been handed down from Jesus to the apostles. So when Apostle John looked at Demetrius, he concluded, this guy is walking as per what Jesus told us to walk, as per the truth Jesus taught us. So the truth testify that Demetrius is walking in the light. But the same truth testified that Diotrephes was walking in darkness. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, when you see people walking in the truth in your church as a leader, encourage them and also commend them. Encourage them and commend them. But when you are encouraging, encouraging them and you are commending them, commend them in wisdom. Glory to God. 
Because nowadays, again, we have people that if you commend them, if you encourage them, if you praise them a little bit, they become puffed up with pride. And, 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 and they begin calling themselves pastors. They begin, uh, they can even divide your church, split your church, go begin their own churches. But this is not what God has called us to do. God has called us to commend people in wisdom, praise them in wisdom, and allow them to continue growing in the Lord. Verse 13 and 14, I had many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with a pen and ink. But I hope to see you shortly, and we shall speak face to face. We shall speak. You see, this is a man, this is a man that was very bold. John never feared anything. He never feared, oh, if I come, then uh, Demetrius, the, uh, Diotrephes, he may cause a sin. No, he never feared. His, his message was bold. I'm coming to remove that guy. I'm coming to excommunicate that guy. I'm coming to expose his sin. And, and, and I love this kind of approach because there was no hypocrisy in, in, in the life of the Apostle John. There's so much hypocrisy today. People will see you doing things that are not good. People will see others gossiping others. And in, 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 instead of approaching them and, and confronting them so that we uproot this evil, they will be the ones to gossip throughout the year, throughout the century, uh, staying in the same place, gossiping and gossiping and gossiping instead of uh, 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 rebuking this brother that is sinning, this sister that is sinning, with the hope of bringing this brother back to Christianity. Some leaders will not expose the sin, but they will use the sin against that brother for the rest of his life. They'll be gossiping them for the rest of his life. Now, those are dangerous people. People that don't want to lead other people to Jesus. People that don't want to expose the sin of other people for the sake of bringing these sinners into repentance. But they want to use their sin to preach against them. To preach. And there are so many, there are so many preachers, especially in Africa, who are like this. Once they know your sins, once they know your, 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 weak, your weak point, then they use that against you. They will be using that to preach. Even when they are preaching, they'll be using you as an example. Why? To score points for themselves. But you don't grow your ministry by destroying other people. You don't grow your ministry by destroying, by speaking. So you are speaking against that local church so that your church can grow. You are speaking against that other pastor so that your church can grow. Things, spiritual things don't work like that. The moment you begin to destroy others, you are destroying yourself and you are destroying those people that are hearing you and God will remove those people from you. This is why people, some churches struggle with membership. They only have 20, 10, 5 people. The church never grows. You know why? Because every time God brings people to this pastor, he uses example, bad example of other pastors to build his people and it doesn't work like that. You cannot destroy people's character, people's life with the hope to build your own church, with the hope to build your own ministry. It doesn't work like that. It does not. This is, what, this is what Diotrephes was trying to do. He was trying to destroy the life of John. He was trying to destroy the, 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 the character of John the Apostle with the hope that he's going to build his own kingdom to himself. But it backfired. It backfired. Why? Because you cannot character assassinate others with the hope of building yourself. No, as you character assassinate others, you are planting a seed that you will reap. You are planting, you are sowing a seed that it will come back to you a hundredfold as you gossip, as you speak maliciously, as you destroy the life of others. It will come back to you in a gigantic way. So if you are thinking, no, I'm, I'm building, I'm building, I'm building my church, I'm building my ministry by destroying the life of the other brother, by destroying the life of that guy, you are destroying, you'll find out in a bitter way that you, and you have all along been destroying your own self. It's my prayer that you will be wise enough 
It's my prayer that you will be wise enough not to destroy your ministry through destroying other people's ministry. Even when, I, when we began the Bible school in, in, in Mombasa, there are students who used to come to me and tell me, oh, you know, there's another person who's, who's begun his Bible school. There's this and that who's begun his Bible school. And God is my witness. I never fought anybody who began their own Bible school. Why should I? I don't have that ability to fight people. Why should I fight them? And we are building the same kingdom. We are training leaders for the work of the ministry. We are impacting leaders for the work of the ministry. So why should I, why should I go and, and, and destroy somebody who has come from America, from wherever, uh, so that I can build my own, my, own, my own Bible school? And this is one of the reasons why our Bible school has lasted for long. Bible schools come and go. So many Bible schools, are, they have closed down. Uh, because, you know, when they open, they open the mentality of profit making. They want to make money. But we are not in the business of making money. We are in the business of raising leaders for the work of the ministry. We are in the business of raising leaders for the work of the ministry. We are in the business of raising, raising leaders for the work of the ministry. And there are, there, are even, there are even pastors who came in Mombasa. They fought us. They, they, they fought against us. They fought us. They, they, they didn't like us. And you know what has happened? They, they, they are the one now who have closed their Bible school, but our Bible school is still going on. Because you do not establish a ministry by fighting other ministry. That is the simplest way of killing your ministry. That is the simplest way of killing your ministry. If you want to kill your ministry, just fight other preachers. Just fight other ministers. I hope this, 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 this word has, has blessed you. We'll continue from there. Grace be with you and Jesus bless you.